1898, a Swedish immigrant farmer named Olaf Oman unearthed a large stone in the roots of a tree he was clearing on his farm near the Douglas County town of Kensington, Minnesota. The 200-pound stone was chiseled with a message in runes, an old Scandinavian alphabet from the Viking era. I'm Debbie Miller, reference specialist in the Minnesota Historical Society Library. Once translated, the runes told a strange story of a transatlantic journey taken in the year 1362 by eight Swedes and 22 Norwegians, ending, as one translation suggests, with a third of the party, quote, red with blood and dead, end quote. Supposedly, the survivors then carved the stone before leaving the area. Ever since the stone's existence became known, it has been the subject of fierce debate about its origins and authenticity, arguments that continue to this day. Runologists, scholars who study runes and how they evolved over time, and others interested in the stone's possible claim on the discovery of America by Scandinavians before Columbus, went back and forth with their theories. I'm Henrik Williams. I'm a professor at the University of Uppsala in Sweden. Rune stones are stones with runes on them. So what are runes? Well, runes are just ordinary letters, the ones that were used by Germanic people, that is English, German, Scandinavians, in olden times. Most of the rune stones we have are from the Viking Age, and that would be a thousand years ago. And they're memorials for dead people. But then there were runes in the Middle Ages, which would be, well, 13, 1400s too, and they would be usually gravestones and, and baptismal funds and church bells and so forth. So runes are just letters used when people didn't know how to use the regular letters that we have now, that we got from Latin. So these letters, the runes, they're used uh, in Northwestern Europe, in England a little bit, in Germany a little bit too, but mainly in Scandinavia and Sweden would be the heartland, I would say, of runic writing. And uh, these letters, in contrary to what most people believe, are not at all magical intrinsically. They're just letters. And perhaps that sounds boring, but actually the truth is always more exciting. And to read what they actually say in these wonderful stories that you hear is much more exciting, at least in my view, than what it would be you know, dealing with magic. So you have um, about 7,000 runic inscriptions altogether in Northwestern Europe, and uh, about half of those are found in Sweden, and most of those are rune stones from the Viking Age. Some runes were in use in the 14th century that were not still being used in the 19th century, and vice versa. Some students of the stone have thought the message was a cryptogram, a code, for a different message than the translation given here seems to say. One of the earliest and best known proponents of the 14th century origin of the runes on this stone was Yalmer Holand, a Norwegian immigrant who lived in Wisconsin and wrote books about the history of Norwegians in America. Several years after the stone's discovery in 1898, when controversy about it had died down somewhat, Holand's interest breathed new life into the debate. The stone was scrutinized by scholars who argued the finer points of runic analysis, as well as 14th and 19th century history. The intense debate went on for decades, and over the years the stone was exhibited at the Minnesota Historical Society, the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, the New York World's Fair, and even in Scandinavia, the motherland of rune stones. Since 1959, the home of the Kensington Runestone has been in a small museum in Alexandria, Minnesota, founded by the local Chamber of Commerce. Much of the documentary record relating to its controversial history is found in the Minnesota Historical Society collections. To see the original Kensington Runestone, visit the museum in Alexandria. You can see a plaster replica of the stone at the Minnesota History Center in St. Paul in the Minnesota 150 exhibit. The stone elicits strong emotions and opinions on both sides, from those who believe it proves definitively that Norsemen discovered America a century before Columbus, and those who believe with equal fervor that the stone is a 19th century hoax. Regardless of its origin, we think it is a pretty compelling piece of Minnesota history.